is what we're used to hearing rather than which is what we should know the recorder can do. The recorder, probably very similar to the ukulele, has been really ostracised in Australia. It's, it's certainly viewed by probably most of the population as a primary school instrument, and some would even call it a toy. But it is a highly virtuosic instrument, which you just need to scratch the surface to see the rich history of repertoire that it has, which spans hundreds of years. Definitely don't underestimate the recorder as an instrument. Everyone views it as an easy instrument to play, but it's a difficult instrument to master. It's a very unforgiving instrument, and if you play it badly, it will sound bad. <laughs> It's one that requires a lot of breath control. It requires excellent coordination and articulation to make it sound good. For those who aren't familiar with recorder history, we sort of had our golden age in the Baroque period, which ended in around 1750. When we see the development of classical music, we see flutes starting to emerge and clarinets. Essentially, the recorder couldn't keep up with those dynamics. From about 1750, we sort of went into a little bit of a hibernation stage. <laughs> and it's not until 1950 that the recorder really started coming back into mainstream repertoire and with more experimental styles of writing, more avant-garde. And so there's really wide range. So we go from this sort of sweet early music to highly experimental contemporary works as well. My favourite, even though we're not supposed to say, is the bass recorder. The range of the instrument sits in a really mellow and haunting tone. It's quite unlike any other recorder and I've really latched on to that instrument in particular. It's a bit of a can of worms <laughs> when you ask her how many recorders there are because there's a lot of different instruments. We've got historic Renaissance style instruments, transitional ones, rock ones, and even some modern ones. This beast here is a contra bass recorder. Even though it's a larger instrument, it actually has a softer tone. So I think I own around 20 or so recorders. It's an ever-growing collection and I don't think it will ever be complete, <laughs> but it never quite <laughs> gets there. It's like, oh, I could use that. This French repertoire would be really nice on this auditeur. Maybe I should just <laughs> grab it for that. This is called a sopranino, a little bit like a piccolo for flute playing. Utilised really because it's got quite a high shrill sound which can be heard over the top of orchestras. So it's got a really strong um, top register which makes it excellent for orchestral sort of playing. And um, this was also popular um, in the 17th and 18th century um, with owners of birds, because they play bird songs that they've often associated with bird tunes. I certainly do teach recorder. In primary school, it's first lesson of that year is always a reminder <laughs> of how far um, kids can really come. So it's, uh, it's often where we've got absolutely no breath control. You can hear the instruments three blocks away, squeaking and squawking away. I've had students leave it under pot plants. It's been found under the fridge. I've had them, unfortunately, with slugs inside them. So the plastic ones are excellent. You can put them in the dishwasher if you need to to clean them out. <laughs> Advice for students or parents that are trying to hide down the other end of the house while their beginner students are playing, I promise there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It does get better. 
there is a wealth of repertoire that you're going to get to explore if you just keep at that practice and discover all the recorders there are to perform. Thank you.